we're in a very different cultural and political climate now uh, that kind of forces corporations and governments, they're not off the hook anymore, that they have a responsibility to, to think about trans people. My research at GATE examines the particular experience of uh, transgender and non-binary people in the economy. I became interested in thinking more about uh, transgender and non-binary people through my own personal experiences. And it was only after beginning testosterone and realizing the kind of opportunities I was afforded uh, after I became legible as masculine that became it became very apparent to me the kinds of disparities that that we live in and I think one of the key features that we've left out in all of the recent discussions around uh, gender in the economy is that it's mostly focused on disparities between men and women it leaves out a percentage of the population that don't identify uh, as either a man or a woman and often aren't able to be understood in the current kinds of metrics that we have. Part of the reason that I find it difficult to kind of evaluate trans and non-binary people and in the workplace or in the workforce or in the economy is because there aren't good metrics to deal with these kinds of identities. So they're oftentimes left out or suctioned into the normative male and female categories that often don't align with people's birth certificates or don't align with people's uh, identities or whatnot. It's a very difficult question to understand how it is that you, on the one hand, help to capture people who identify as trans or non-binary, and then also within that, how you understand kind of the many facets of their identity within being trans or non-binary. We know from the research that trans women, and especially trans women of color, uh, face kind of the most extreme forms of discrimination and even violence um, at the same time that we have a rising visibility of a particular kind of trans masculine or trans feminine person. And I think that understanding the nuances within this kind of term or identity is really important. There are many trans and non-binary people, especially trans and non-binary activists, who are very fearful about interventions uh, by governments or other large entities like corporations um, because of the histories of violence that trans people ha have experienced. And so I think it's, it's very important as we engage in these kinds of projects that when we think about metrics, we think about whether we should create those metrics and if so, how. What are the fears? Are, are, are the kind of trade-offs of creating better measures uh, to think about gender diversity uh, worth it? for potential opportunities or, or government interventions in the face of legitimate fears around increased violence. And so when we're thinking about helping trans and non-binary people to thrive, for me, the next portion of that is to really think seriously about what the systemic barriers have, how they have contributed to the kind of employment outcomes for trans and non-binary people. I hope that my research sheds light on the barriers that people face when trying to access employment. Who am I? What am I doing? <laughs> What, what's my dissertation on? What do I study?